Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the RPG Limit Breaks podcast. Uh, as always, uh, we have a couple of our hosts, myself, Ghoul02, and a new one for you today. We actually have Steamed Hands with Cheese. Uh, Steamed Hands, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing great. It's been a little while. I think you've been on the channel before for, uh, we did, you were here for the uh, FF16 preview or stream we did, if I remember correctly, right? Uh, yeah, I did that, and I did a run with Sid uh, for uh, Final Fantasy VII Intermission on yeah, the, uh, uh, preview as well. And then I was with uh, was with you guys last year at uh, RPG Limit Break, uh, doing comms for uh, for Sid for Final Fantasy VII Integrate. Yeah, uh, super 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 excited to have you. And then of course we do have our guest for the week, which is the one, the only Vonnie Von. Vonnie, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Uh, doing great. Uh, I just got LASIK this week, so uh, if anybody's like, oh, cool, we're not wearing glasses, that's why. I, I can I, see that now. That was one of the first things I said when we were getting set up. <laughs> uh, the weirdest thing about it is, this is maybe a bit, I used to wear uh, contacts for about 12 years, and I stopped wearing them because I got a, an eye infection one time, so I'm not dealing with that anymore. Ooh. But like mentally, I'm reverting back to the state of, oh, I'm wearing contacts because I'm not wearing glasses and I can see and my eyes are itching right. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like going to bed, I'm like, oh, I have to take my contacts. And I'm like, no, you don't, cool. This is no. what your eyes look like now. You're good. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it's been a, a very interesting experience to say the least, but that's not why we're here. We are here to talk with Vani about all things Newtopia. Which mm-hmm. is, uh, of course, as everybody knows, thanks to the uh, brilliant 2019 speedrun, the root yes. of all video games. Uh, it, 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 it is the <laughs> it is the progenitor of video games themselves, uh, and, and not just video games. Video game culture was based right. on Newtopia, you know. Basically, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. uh, we're going to talk about it a little bit. So uh, if anybody doesn't know, I didn't know about this actually. The first time I heard of Newtopia was a let's play actually, uh, way way back in the day. You know, those used to be a thing that people would put on YouTube and people would watch. Yep. Um, yep. Not, not so much anymore, um, but. Uh, it's a TurboGrafx-16 video game that, as you say, inspired Zelda. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. So again, those those that not familiar with it, it is a it is an action adventure RPG. Um, it is yes. There, people have drawn similarities to the original Legend of Zelda. I mean, I, I suppose I see it. Um, so actually, you know what? Hold on. Let me. I want to. I want to grab something real quick, if you don't mind. Um, <laughs> All right. Oh, well, we got displays and everything. Just so you know, I have. Just so you know, I have bona fides. This is my childhood copy of Newtopia oh, that I actually played growing up. I, this is I did own as as, as somebody one of the <laughs> um, the commenters uh during that run at limit break yes i was one of the 26 kids in north america that owned a turbo graphic 16. Um, it was an extremely obscure console in japan it was known as the pc engine where it was much much more popular than it was here in the states and part of the reason for that is that first of all the pc engine had a much much larger library of games we got here in in north america we got a mere fraction of what they got in in japan and then also in japan they had a lot of peripherals like the tgcd um so on and so forth other expansions so uh, they, they just poured a lot into it there now uh, here in the in the u.s it got completely annihilated by the other 16 bit consoles of course mean the super nintendo and the sega genesis so it just kind of got shoved into obscurity when it came to that kind of generation of consoles but i owned one um i remember buying it from toys r us uh shout outs to that store when it actually still existed and i was just super excited to have a 16-bit console and uh, i had a few games for it and i mean there are some others up there i could show you but yeah but this uh this newtopia one is um is the one that i that i really remember from playing it back in the day and those that aren't familiar with what i do on like my twitch channel whatnot is i is i'm a, a retro speed a retro game speed runner i do a lot of rpgs obviously my involvement with limit break we'll get into that is is well documented but but i mean i just speed run retro games mostly and 
and and even further, pretty much all the games that I speed run, especially when I was starting out, <clears throat> were games that I played growing up. I was born in the 70s, believe it or not. And so, you know, those those that genre of retro consoles were ones that I actually owned originally when I was growing up. In fact, the NES that I use. Currently, it's actually not mine. It was my wife's, who was my age too. But uh, but it was the original console that she had back in the eighties. So so yeah. So I so my cred is legit when it comes to retro games and retro speed running. <laughs> but but yeah. So the the TurboGrafx sixteen. What this was one of the the few games on there that um, that I still carried with me as far as wanting to play it when I got into speed running, you know, just kind of thinking about games, thinking back fondly on games that I played, that I played growing up. And what made Newtopia so special for me, as far as a speed run goes is it was, Oh, um, there used to, be, I, I don't know if they still do them before, but there was a, a streamer by the name of golden who would do a series of events called 12 hour challenges where it, it was, you know, it was meant to be in one setting, but you could do it in, you know, break it up into two or three if you wanted to, but where you would take, where you would spend 12 straight hours just learning a speed run for a game that you didn't know before. And I thought, oh, that's a really cool concept. So the one and only 12-hour challenge I ever did was for Newtopia. And um, it was it was a bit of a challenge, certainly, as the name would suggest. And but but I thought, oh, okay, you know, this is something I feel like I, I could enjoy grinding. I could really enjoy kind of, you know, digging my claws into. And so Newtopia was that was the first speed run where I ever beat an established world record. Um, I took the any percent world record and then later the uh, the one hundred percent and held on to those records for for a few years. Um, and and as such, you know, I was like, oh hey, you know, it kind of just like it was kind of that snowball rolling downhill as far as confidence and enjoyment and and whatnot achievement for for that game and i just i i just really started to focus on it and then that's that's where i really started to break through as far as getting involved in communities in events marathons things like that i would be like hey i'm pretty good at utopia i've got some marathon safety especially with the 100 percent category this is something that i can that i can put out there for people to see and so it just kind of became my game, not just for myself, but for the perception of others in the community uh, of me as a speedrunner, like I was the Newtopia guy. And so um, the first ever live event that I did a speed run, uh, where, where, I, where I did a speed run at a live event, excuse me, was at um, was at an event called Calithon back in 2019. It was up in um, up in Santa Barbara, uh, Ghost Kumo, who is uh, a, a a a very prominent member of our Limit Break community, he was one so of the, uh, the organizers. Very staff the, member for Limit yes, Break. Yes, Van staff member. <laughs> yes, he he was heavily involved in that in that Calithon event, and I got to I got to run Newtopia to a to an audience. If you include tech staff and the dude on my couch, to an audience of about like seven people live it was about 3 30 in the morning 3 30 a.m um i had just uh, the the night before i had drove in about like five hours uh to get there and um and it was it, it was it was fun it, it, you know, it was cool because again without there not being a lot of people there there wasn't a lot of pressure it was at 3 30 in the morning it wasn't a ton of viewership but it was still an awesome and and fun experience um so to kind of get my feet wet and then the second live event that i ever did where did where did one you know in person was at rpg limit break 2019 when i ran uh when i ran utopia 100 percent there and that was one of the most memorable experiences of my life being able to do that because um as you know at, we'll, i'm sure we'll be talking about this later on here but um rpg limit break is an event and a, a group, a cause, an organization that means so, mm -hmm. so much to me. And the fact that I'm able to be as involved in it as I am is, is just, is huge. I, you know, I mean, if you, if you heard, and I'm sure we'll reference this later, my, um, 
uh, the, what do you call it? After the event ends and we kind of give those like testimonials, I guess, where, you know, we get to talk on the mic for a couple minutes. I talked a lot about that, um, then and how I kind of got into the community in the first place. But, um, so to be able to run that game, which had meant so much to me in an event, which meant so much to which means so much to me, um, and, and to do it there with a lot of, a lot of great friends. And I had an awesome couch for that one too. It was, um, it was just a super, super sweet experience. And like I said, one that I will, uh, one that I'll, I'll, I'll never forget, but, um, but part of that event and why it was so, um, why it was so meaningful to, to the whole Newtopia phenomenon, if you will. I think, I think the phrase Newtopia phenomenon is actually legitimate, <laughs> um, is that I had on the couch with me, uh, I had the legendary Nits guy one. I had, uh, the, the ever so effervescent Scala kitty. And then someone who is certainly no stranger to this community, uh, my, my dear, dear friend, Natara. And they all did a fantastic job of being, of, of promulgating this meme, if you will, about how Newtopia is such an inspirational medium to, you know, really just kind of the world at large and, and society as we know it. And, um, we, we kind of just, we kind of just ran with that. And, and when we did, it's, you know, I, I mentioned the snowball rolling downhill. It kind of took on a life of its own where, <laughs> where Newtopia inspired stuff that you never even would have considered would be inspired by an obscure TurboGrafx-16 video game. And, and we had a, we had a lot of fun with that. So yes, th that this is a great way to mess with, uh, with YouTube commenters whenever I would talk about, um, about Newtopia inspiring, inspiring the legend of Zelda. And you get people who just do not understand the jokes. Like, wait a minute, Newtopia came out three years later. How is that <laughs> even possible? What is this guy talking about? And uh, they they don't know what I'm talking about clearly, um, and they need to educate themselves. And 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 listen, I I am happy to educate the masses. I am like the uh, I am the Newtopia prophet, if you will. And so I will uh, I, I will I will school anybody who needs it on on the. Uh, the, the the finer points as well as the the history and the lore of of Newtopia itself. So um, so yeah, that's that's kind of a, a, a very long winded rundown of of what the game means to me and and my involvement with it. So yeah, yeah. So you, you obviously have a lot of uh, uh, knowledge of the game uh, versus someone like me who has basically no knowledge of the game. So I will teach what, you by child. <laughs> Thank you, Sensei. Yes. Uh, sir. <laughs> when, uh, so, so tell me why, why, why is it a, why is it a Legend of Zelda? Like, what's the similarities between the two games for someone like me who has never played the game before? Okay, um, if we can just set aside the inspiration memes and and that whole and and everything like that, we're just going to pull back the curtain a little bit. I know this is sometimes a little unsavory to do um but but simply put newtopia is a shameless and blatant ripoff of the legend of zelda period okay everything to you know um the you know you, the the you have to collect eight things to go get the final boss um you have bombs you have a step ladder you have an object that lights up dark rooms you have um oh god what else you don't have a bow and arrow you don't have a boomerang in that, at least not in the first one. Um, but uh, but you have you have a, a a magic wand that shoots fire. Um, I mean, I could go on and on, but but the the similarities and the direct references and and um, and whatnot between Newtopia and Zelda are connected by very very straight lines. So so yeah, but but to that point. Newtopia does a lot of things in its, I think, in its presentation mostly that does a good job of setting itself apart from the Legend of Zelda. Um, first of all, the the soundtrack in that game is awesome. Mm -hmm. There are four different overworlds that you go to as opposed to just one in Zelda, and each overworld has its own theme and. 
Um, the one for the, the, the second oval world is okay. The one for the others are awesome. They're excellent. So, um, so there's that. The boss themes. Um, there are two different regular boss themes and then one specifically for the final boss. The one especially for the final boss is a scorcher. It's just such, such good music. In fact, that one is, I believe it's that theme that is one of the many different songs that Edward will play in the Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise randomizer. Um, you know, the, the, if you're not familiar with, with that real quick, um, there is a section where, where one of the characters plays a song on his harp and it gets beamed remotely into a place where the main characters are in distress and, and, you know, plot and blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> but what the developer of that game does is they've put in probably at least a hundred or so different songs that are references to other RPGs and video games that Edward will play instead of what he plays in the vanilla. So that is one of them uh, because it's that good. Also, um, uh, Zero, um, uh, Dearth, who was the final boss of the game, is one of the Zeromus sprites as well. But anyway, so, um, but yeah, so but back to the differences between Zelda and Newtopia. Soundtrack is one of them. Um, the And again, with it being on the TurboGrafx-16, it definitely does have better graphable, graphical excuse me, capabilities. And a lot of the enemy sprites are really, really cool. They're just, they're very vibrant and expressive. And it's just a lot of fun to, um, to, to look at. Um, so there's that too. The bosses are definitely more varied. As far as the speed run goes, there's, uh, with, uh, with almost no exceptions, there's a lot of manipulations that you can do. Um, so yeah, so to talk a little bit about kind of the speed run tech itself, yeah, a lot of manipulations with, um, with the bosses. I mentioned before that there's an object that lights up dark rooms starting from about the third or fourth dungeon on. There are several dark rooms in well, in the any percent version, we don't even collect the object that lights up rooms. So you do probably over the course of the speed run, you navigate about, I'm going to guess it's about 60 or 70 rooms completely in the dark. So, um, when so you say in the dark, can you see your player sprite or do you have you to can know? see You can see your player sprite and you can see your enemy sprites and that's it. Oh, you can see the doorways too. Okay. So, um, but but everything else as far as, as far as blocks to go around, blocks you don't want to get next to because they shoot out daggers or whatnot, um, holes in the ground that spawn enemies, you need to know exactly where those are um, so that you can, so when you're watching the speed run, uh, you're, you're watching me in dark rooms move in particular ways that are as efficient as possible, but you can't see the blocks. I know exactly where everything is, but but from from so you know for someone like you, as you admit that that is not familiar with the game at all, you see me walking efficiently through all of those dark rooms, and and it's pretty impressive because first of all, it takes a lot of memorization to know exactly a lot of those patterns, um, but then but then also to be able to do it quickly um as, as quickly as possible is is uh is, is pretty cool to watch um yeah that's what, 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 was it, what was it like learning those because you said you learned this in 12 hour challenge uh yeah. somebody that hasn't done a 12 hour challenge sometimes you don't really have a lot of time to like get in the whole idea is you no. don't get into the weeds of learning the game you just say okay yeah. let's, let's learn the basics get through it and then by the end yeah. of it, you do the run well, that's not a lot of time to be memorizing 60 dark rooms. So when yeah. your first run, did you just go ahead and pick up the lamp? Did you try to learn? Oh, I certainly, I certainly did. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I picked up uh, it, the, the, it's specifically called the Moonbeam Moss is what is uh, lights up the rooms. So, um, but yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess it, lamp I, would be copyrighted by uh, the Legend of Zelda, right? Yeah, no, no, no. Can't have that. Can't yeah. have that at all. <laughs> well, well, they, um, they got their second, but the, but they they were a little bit faster to the uh, copyright office. Uh, yes, right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. So when I was learning it for the twelve hour challenge, I I did pick up that that item so that. I wasn't, you know, no pun intended, completely in the dark when it came to learning it, but uh, yeah, it certainly made things a lot easier. And then, and then it, at that point, it was just, it was just Bizhawk save states, and it's like, okay, I would do, I would grind out one level at a time and go in, and if I mess up somewhere in a dark room, refresh the the save state and start over again, and you know, basically, just just it, it was a grind. It, it, and uh, obviously, when I when I started out for the for the twelve hour challenge. 
Uh, the run that I was able to finish was about, um, oh God, probably about a good like 10 or 12 minutes behind the world record. By the time I was done, you know, the before the, the world record was taken from me, I had beaten the previous world record by about like eight minutes. So... I mean, to, to shave off that much time in a run where um, where the, the PB for any percent, where the, I'm sorry, the world record for any percent is less than 50 minutes. So we're not talking about a terribly wrong, long speed run here, especially by RPG standards. So, um, I mean, getting within yeah, 10 it minutes was, in, in, in 12 hours, that is nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 no. I, 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 I'm talking about like after after playing it for a couple of years, yeah. I was able to get, you know, what was a time of like, you know, an hour and eight minutes in that down to like sub 50 for, for any percent. Um, so, uh, but yeah, it was just, that was just a lot of time and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of grinding. And, well, and, and here's the thing too, is that, you know, doing it for so many events, um, I just spent a lot of time practicing it and it just, you know, it's just the repetition for those, for those of you that aren't, for those of you that may be watching, listening, that don't do a lot of speed running yourself or aren't terribly familiar with how all that goes, it's it's practice it's a practice makes perfect kind of thing this is something that i try to impart on my kids all the time is that you know if you want to be good at something if you want to really you know especially if it's something where you're performing in front of people and you know you're you, know, you have leaderboards or standings or whatever it is like for the sports they play um that you that you just got to practice that grind is is really what sets you apart from from other people from from your peers and um you know for something like speed running i mean we have we have speedrun.com we have leaderboards that show you know if you're grinding for those for those pbs it's it's there in black and white um as far as you know your achievements and and how that um and and the results of that or the fruits of your labor as they say um so so yeah, but being able to, uh, you know, Newtopia is, and, and, I, and I think that's why this game is so special to me and, and why it means so much is because it was a gateway into so many different communities, so many different events, so many different groups of people that I was able to be involved in what they were doing and get to know them or whatnot because they wanted me to speed run this game for whatever it was that they were doing. And so, um, and to me, that that's the best part of what we do here as a speedrun community is is the actual community itself, where we get to know people that have similar interests that you know you become friends with, that become close with, and whatnot. And obviously, Limit Break is a is a fantastic example of that. This event every year. This will be now, I think, the sixth one in a row that I'll be attending. That sounds right. Um, and. I mean, the reason why I'm doing this now six times in a row is because the first five were super great because it's obviously a great cause. There's a ton of wonderful people there that I, you know, that I adore very much that I can't wait to see in six weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so, but, but, but I wouldn't have been able to become a part of those, um, a, a, a part of those communities, a part of those people's lives, if it wasn't for this guy right here. So, yeah. um, so shout outs to Newtopia for, uh, for being something that has improved the quality of my adult life in a major, major way. Very nice. Yeah, well, uh, so I, I always think the cool, those are the, the cool thing about speedrunning for me always is that collaborative competition, I always call it. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. What were you going to say, Steam? Sorry. I was going to ask uh, very some uh, similar about that. Speaking of speed running, like, did you do <clears throat> did you do most of the routing yourself, or was it a community effort? Uh, well, <laughs> the community for that game was basically non-existent. Uh, the okay. world record that I when so when I was doing the twelve-hour challenge, the PB that I was deriving my stats from, or my, my strats from, excuse me, was probably about like three or four years old. And it was from a streamer who had long since gone inactive. So I didn't really have any 
I, I unfortunately didn't have anyone to kind of like bounce any questions off of like, Hey, how do you do this? Or how do you deal with this RNG? Or how do you do, you know, this, this or that. So essentially I use that previous world record as framework for, okay, this is like where you need to go. You know, enter this room, you know, going up, enter this room, going left, whatever it is. And, and so that, that just kind of got me through the game. But then when it came to actually grinding things down, that was as, as far as what got it to the run that it became what is now my standing PB. That was pretty much all me where I was trying to figure out, okay, where can I make shortcuts? What can I skip? What can I, um, you know, how, how, what's a more efficient way to fight this boss? Um, so on and so forth. And so, so yeah, a, a lot of that, a, a lot of the fine tuning, I think is, uh, that's probably the best phrase for it. A lot of the fine tuning that you see in my PB of, of Newtopia, my PBs of Newtopia, because there's essentially three categories on the board. Um, that, that's pretty much all my doing where I, um, I, I I figured out a lot of that stuff myself just through trial and error, um, which, which is cool because, you know, you, you get that sense of accomplishment where you can look at specific strats or you could look at specific sections of the run, excuse me. And you can say, oh yeah, you know, like I did this, this is my baby, you know, <laughs> um, uh, you know, seeing, seeing things that were specifically created or, or invented by, by you. It's just, that's, that's a, it's a pretty cool feeling. Um, and something that I had done, obviously when, you know, I became the Newtopia guy and, you know, everybody knew me for that and whatnot is, you know, I wanted to build the community. I wanted to grow the community. Community is something I'm very much, um, I'm very much all about, but the challenge was that, you know, for people that wanted to run it on OG hardware or whatnot, there's not a whole, not a whole lot of TurboGrafx 16s floating around out there, you know. <laughs> I mean, there certainly weren't very many people that already had them in their collection from back in the day. And then if you did want to find some, you know, you're you're paying a, a, a pretty decent amount of money for an obscure console that doesn't have a whole lot of games that a whole lot of people didn't really know. So, so that was a that was a big roadblock or obstacle to trying to get other people involved in this game. And I would beg and plead with people after just about every event, like, come on. I even did, it, it's a now defunct um, program on Games Done Quick's channel it was called Runners Wanted. And it was designed specifically for speed runs of games that weren't mainstream or popular or well-known or whatnot, that it would show it to a rather, you know, considerable audience and say, hey, here's this cool thing you've never heard of. Maybe it suits your fancy. Maybe you want to learn it. Maybe you've been you know, thinking about a new game to pick up. Why not Newtopia, you know? And so so I did that. Just, I mean, just anything I could. And eventually, finally, I did get someone come along, uh, a speedrunner by the name of Green Bomber, who's kind of gone inactive, but, but he he dug his claws into Newtopia and he was like, Hey, let's see how much further we can push this. And he eventually, um, he eventually beat my world record in, in any percent and then did so in, in hundred percent. And, you know, he kind of, uh, implemented a lot of new strats, but it was really neat to see all the work that I had put into that game as far as routing and whatnot. And then to finally see somebody who was enthusiastic as enthusiastic about running it as I was and to, to see a different perspective mm -hmm. of how to approach certain strats, certain sections of the game, boss fights, what have you, um, you know, and, and you're just routing in general to see somebody to get that outside perspective or that outside opinion on how it should be done as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And, and Green Bomber in a lot of the stuff that he did, he takes, um, he takes a ton of risks, which if you were just trying to grind down times as you know, to, to get speed runs as quick as possible, that's probably something you should be doing. Is it reset heavy? Of course it is, but that's just kind of the nature of, of PB grinds. You know, any anybody who has done any kind of speed running knows this. Especially for kind of shorter games, so, you know, 50 minutes, if you reset, you know, even 10, <laughs> 15 minutes in, if you're doing a three hour speedrun session, you're still going to get a lot of attempts and chances to finish that run. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Obviously, less true for someone like me that's run 
10 hour RPGs in the past. Those ones, uh, don't yeah. reset heavy on those. Uh, if the first 15 minutes don't go well, you got another nine and a half to go, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I love to say that the game that I run, uh, remake isn't reset heavy, but, uh, no, it's reset heavy, <laughs> especially yeah. in the first two chapters. <laughs> sure. Sure. So, um, you know, it is funny. <clears throat> I actually get people all throughout the years. I mean, I've, I've been speed running for about the last seven years or so, and I've done all kinds of different games. But I get people that ask me about that want to get into speed running and, you know, kind of some tips or, or just pointers or, hey, can you just kind of point me in this direction as to where to get started? And I always tell them, find a game where the music in the first area or the first section of the game is really, really, really good because you're going to be hearing that music over and over and <laughs> over and over and over again. And so, yeah, um, that that's a good, for me, that's a good starting point, you know? Cause, that is cause a for really me, great I, starting point. I love yeah, that. For, for, start for with me, the music, music first. <laughs> music means a lot you know obviously we're we're doing an interview with me so hey a little bit about Vani. um i actually have a degree in music oh so do i there um, you go yeah yeah i have a, i have a bachelor's in in vocal performance if you couldn't tell um and uh, so so music obviously is something that is very near and dear to my heart because i'm well educated in it i mean if i wanted to i could be a professional music teacher um so this uh, is why you're better than I everyone else at karaoke now, right? So, so we, we know the people are, this is why you're better than everyone else at karaoke, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I kind of did get a little, little, little bit of professional training, you know, just a little. <laughs> we'll have to have a karaoke battle, Danny. Then. Oh yeah. Oh, how about a, how about a karaoke collab? <laughs> oh, Ooh, I, like I like that, that better. Ooh. I like that okay, better. Okay, okay, okay. So we got we got to plan this now. What, what's the collab song between y'all two? We're gonna go. We're doing. If anyone doesn't I'll know, at Little Break, it's tradition every year we go do a karaoke night where like a big group yeah. of people will go out. Yeah. Uh, Little Break is not just the stream. Yeah. People that aren't there. I, There's I, board I, games I, I, and. Yeah, I, I feel like the perfect. I, I feel like the perfect song to sing would be "The Boy Is Mine" by Brandy and Monica. That just <laughs> that just naturally would be uh, a, a great one to do. So. Um, but, I'll but take that. Maybe not. If you have any other ideas, maybe we'll 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 talk about that after the interview. Yeah. That's a good idea. We'll we'll so. we'll we'll hash it out and make plans for sure. <laughs> yes. Yes indeed. So um so yeah, but anyway, but the but the music of, of yeah of the game is something that is uh, something that that means a lot to me. And and it's honestly something that I I've actually used that as a kind of like a, a deciding or determining factor when it came to learning new speedrun projects. Like, okay, you know, I kind of I kind of hit my limit or I'm kind of done with this game now. I want to move on to the next one. And I mean, if you look at my Twitch bio, I have links to all of my PBs in there. You can see that the the list of games that I have run is long and varied. It is, <laughs> there are all kinds of different genres and different eras of, of video games that I've hit in there. But there have been times where I've, I have decided to pick up a project because I like the music in the game. And I'm like, okay, I'll just listen to the music. That'll be fun. And then as far as figuring out how to, how to speed run or whatnot, I'll just, I'll just figure that out as I go. And I did. And, and that's, and, you know, and that's how you add speed runs to your repertoire is just, hey, this seems cool, let me learn it. And then you do. And that's just one of the magical things about speed running in, <clears throat> in, uh, in general, so. So yeah, uh, just back to the, while we're still talking about the music thing, I see somebody mentioning uh, bringing rock band to, to Limit Break. First of all, yes, that would be awesome. <laughs> Second of all, I do remember in years past, there was a PC over in the corner and there were a couple people that had the guitars, uh, just the guitars though, but, um, and they were playing kind of like a homebrew guitar hero deal so um so yeah there is uh there there has been um music video game playage in the practice room at so, limit break before and i, I, would I love have some to... deep lore on this <laughs> oh do you oh One go of my ahead fondest gdq memories ever uh i don't know if i, if I was there for this i better just heard about this but at one of the GDQs, somebody brought Rock Band. And, you know, you got the bass guitar and the normal guitar and the drums. And those fill up immediately. Yeah. But nobody ever wants to do vocals in Rock Band. Yeah. Probably. You know, it's like the one kind of embarrassing one. It's one's not as difficult. So they're playing this. And what happens? But the founder of GDQ himself, Michael Yama, goes up, picks up the microphone, 
absolutely nails a song on vocals and then just drops the mic and walks away. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's 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 actually really funny you mentioned that, Ghoul, because maybe about like a couple months ago, um, my wife found someone locally on, it was like on OfferUp or, you know, whatever, Marketplace, and they were selling their rock band drum kit. And this is, I mean, me and my buddies, we played rock band all the time when it came out. Mm -hmm. Very, very fond memories of it. And so when when she got it, we were able to we were able to play again because I already had the guitars and the mic and whatnot. And so I enjoy playing all of the instruments, but my kids really can only sing. So um, we have the opposite problem where I want to sing, but the kids can only use the microphone. So I'm stuck playing, you know, I'm stuck playing drums and guitar, or whatnot, <laughs> um, which I don't, I don't complain about. Those are all super fun, but, um, but I, I definitely do enjoy, uh, I do enjoy laying down a vocal or two, uh, when I get the chance. So, yeah. Hey. Oh man. Good memories. Although it is funny, I used to play that. I had the Wii versions of those, which were, if you had the option of buying Rock Band or Guitar Hero on any console other than Wii, you should. But that was what I had back in the day. I didn't get a PS3 until several yeah. years later. Yeah. Um, I had the annoying misfortune of if I played Rock Band, I had to actually use the Rock Band guitars as opposed to the yeah. Guitar Hero ones, which is uh, just just a poor. I, that, you, that's really funny. You mentioned that it's the exact opposite. I don't like the the tactile sensation of the bun really? of the buttons kind of being sunk into the neck. I like them to be raised, um, and I also like the um, the one that the 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 you know the tactile the little um, strip that's on the the yellow button, so you know where where that is. Um, I like the feel of that one. Uh, I the like biggest problem always is better. just like the, the the rock band one. The strummer doesn't click. It, it feels so much fuzzier. See, I, it's, I, it's funny. I like the click too. I like to get that kind of confirmation that I'm that I'm hitting it at the right time. Yeah, that, that's yeah. why I say yeah, the, yeah. the guitar hero guitars are so much better than the, the rock band ones. Yeah, but I, you know, going back to what you were talking about as far as the the break room goes, um, or I'm sorry, the, the the practice room there with rock band, it's really tough to perform a song on vocals if you don't know the song if you don't know the song and you're playing drums or especially even guitar it's a lot easier but if you don't know how to sing the song yeah. um it can make doing it um blind extremely difficult so um so yeah my kids only know like three and, and, and that's the other thing too my kids want to my kids want to sing especially my daughter and she only knows like three oh, of the no. songs so we do the same the three songs <laughs> the same three over. songs but, i mean you know yeah but but you know again and, and somebody mentioned it here in chat the memories last last a lifetime and that is 100 sure. percent true right, what, what to be able to now? we, we got to keep going what, what's the deeper or what's the vani von's kids favorite songs in rock band um, okay, so she uh, she loves to sing "Creep" uh, by Radiohead. Yes, uh, she loves. Um, uh, there's, there's a really cool song called "Monsoon" by a band called Tokyo Hotel, um, and that one's a lot of fun to play too. What else does she do? She likes. Um, oh, what else does she sing? Oh, a song by the Yeah Yeah Yeahs called "Maps." She really likes that one. What else does she sing? Um, oh, "Say It Ain't So" by Weezer. Very nice. Um, yeah. Uh, there might be a couple others, but th those are her, those are her go-tos. So, yeah. yeah. Got, got some good musical chops there for sure. <laughs> oh, she better. I mean, yeah. you know, she is, uh, <laughs> um, you know, otherwise, um, it could be some uncomfortable conversations, but yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, she's uh, she definitely is uh, is good when it comes to that. Daughter, so, I love yeah. you, but your musical taste sucks. We need to fix this. No, no, no. It, it wouldn't be so much her taste. It would be it would be if she didn't have any talent. I'd be like, oh, where'd you come from? Yeah, it's like we need to change that right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so, so yeah. Music is fun. It's a huge part of my life, and and you know, and and to 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 it's carried over into what I've done with video games, even in my even in my adulthood. So and would so you say that back... like music is like a big part of? Well, I think you already said that, but like music is probably the biggest part of this, like the speed run because I know when I speed run, like music's got to be on point or else it's just annoying. Yeah, like there's several um, games that that I that I can't speed run just because of the the sounds or the music is just grinding to my ears so so if you if you look in if you look in chat for twitch i just put in there one of the emotes from my channel 
um, which is as oh, and you, and you actually you know what? I've got another one too. Another sweet and oops, shoot, another sweet animated emote here. Um, so I've got two different emotes from my channel that are um, meant to signify good music that is that is being listened to. The first is a reference to. Uh, it to Star Tropics, which is another game that I have speed run, and it's it's the the baby dolphin, and when you rescue him, he kind of just bops along there in the water, and when I would um, when I would stream speed runs of it, I'd be like, oh, it kind of looks like he's bopping along to the beat. I kind of like that, and then it occurred to me, I was like, wait a minute. I should make an emote out of this. And so I did. And it's it's super awesome. And then the other one that you see there is um that's the Bonnie V Jams emote. That is a um that is DJ from Super Street Fighter 2. And uh that's one of his his victory poses as he takes out his uh as he takes out his maracas and 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 does a little dance to the music. And so you, I was like, that's pretty Street good. Fighter too. Six. What's say again? Have you seen the Street Fighter Six uh uh DJ? I have not really, no. Oh, you should check it out. He actually, uh, first of all, he still has the maracas that he'll do sometimes when he does That's awesome. victory pose. But also, like, the actual, uh, one of his supers requires you to do timing based on, as though you're actually, like, playing along with the rhythm game, kind of, or whatever, with the way it plays out. It's like, and, like, you have, like, musical notes that pop out. It's like, ba 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 Like, it goes flying really? through. It, it's, it's super, super cool. Um, Interesting. If you're a Street Fighter fan, it actually really is... Uh, it's not it's not like the Rise Super in like Persona 4 uh, arena, but like there is like a timing element to it. And like every time you hit one properly, like a bunch of music notes pop out or whatever. It's super, super cool. Um, nice. I'll, I'll send it to you afterwards. But... <laughs> oh, I see we're getting some, uh, yeah, 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 I, we're getting... I, I see oh, some say, behind I the see, scenes here. <laughs> I see some emotes coming up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there they are. There they are. That's, uh, yeah, for, for, for the audience that might be watching, uh, 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 it, uh, by other means, yes, those are the emotes that we are, are talking about. Um, that cute little dolphin boy and then, and then DJ. Um, and it's funny because Super Street Fighter 2 is something that I will I will occasionally play on Steam or on stream, excuse me, where, um, you know, sometimes if I don't feel like speed running or I'm just bored, I'm like, hey, I just want to play a game that I love a whole lot. I will fire up my Super Nintendo version of Super Street Fighter 2 and uh, I will I will play that. I mean, Ryu, I don't I don't play as DJ really ever, um, but um, I just I always loved that. I always loved that that celebration. I just thought it was, you know. <laughs> like you got your opponent laying on the ground unconscious and bleeding and you're just like yeah <laughs> so yeah <laughs> so so going back towards uh Newtopia just a, a little bit uh, uh Newtopia 1 came out I think it was, it was like three years after the original Legend of Zelda but it came out before A Link to the Past it did uh, which is kind of an interesting thing because it's almost like in that situation it's like it's a spin it's, it's a shoot off of like what Zelda would be like if they continued more on what Zelda One was, rather than like what A Link to the Past did, which you know expanded and changed how yeah. things work. So, so what ended up happening with Newtopia Two then? Because Newtopia Two, how, how many years after did that come out? How different is it? Uh, Just what can one. people expect, uh, you know, at for Newtopia Two at Limit Break this year? What a fantastic segue, Ghoul. Well done. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah. So, so Newtopia Two is another game that I speedrun. That is a game where I do have. Um, I do still hold world records for that one. And um, that one, it, I, I really, really like Newtopia 2 because it definitely takes some of the elements of the first game and, you know, and, and expands on them or, or enhances them. <clears throat> some things that are noteworthy, especially for the speed run, two major things. First of all, you can walk diagonally, which is great, which is something that was introduced in, in Zelda 3. <clears throat> Coincidence? No. <laughs> and then second of all, something else that you can do is, which you couldn't do in the first one, is that when you stab your sword, you can still move. And in fact, you can actually change direction as your sword is out. Because, I mean, you know, the, it stays out for a certain number of frames. But, like, I can, I can be facing down left and be stabbing and then if there's another enemy right above me all i just do is like press up and in that one motion you kind of just swing your sword around and you can um 
you can hit two enemies essentially with one strike. Oh, the combat cool. in that game is very, very fluid. Um, because especially uh, about a third of the way into the game, you get a you get an item that greatly enhances your movement speed. And so when you stab, you move at the speed that you walk. So there's going to be a lot of rooms where you're going to see me just kind of almost kind of like dance around the room as I as I go to defeat all the enemies that I need to in order to clear it to, you know, usually open the door. Um, so that's one of the things that I, I really like about uh, about the speed run of Newtopia 2 specifically is just the, the combat is is there's there's just this great flow to it as far as just kind of the feel the feel of that another thing that i really like about newtopia 2 as far as its you know improvement of the first one um is there's a lot more weapons for you to use in in the first one it was basically just your sword and the fire one that was it in in newtopia 2 excuse me there's a lot more different different weapons that you can use and it's funny because there's this one particular weapon that is normally pretty useless it does very little damage it costs money to use so we ignore it in the any percent category we totally skip it we just we don't want to go on that detour but in the 100 percent category which is what i will be doing for limit break this year um it is it is incredibly useful on one particular enemy which we see probably about um probably about five or six times throughout the course of the run which again you know as it has an estimate of an hour and 20 minutes so not so it's not terribly long um but so to see it five or six times is is a decent amount um but it just absolutely wastes that particular enemy and does virtually nothing to all of the others which is <laughs> I know, it's just kind of an interesting a, kind of an interesting phenomenon with how that goes it's but like a meme um, a, a, a little bit yeah yeah but that's another one where and and this one has a very long animation where you throw something out um and then it comes back so with that you basically i i'll throw it out and then do a 360 on the pad it's it's called the flail it's this very long chain that you throw out and then you do a 360 on the pad and just goes wee and just and just basically flies around the entire room and just sweeps up everything um so it's it's a lot of fun to use it's very very satisfying to kill an enemy that again like i said in any percent you skip this you would otherwise have to do with the sword and can be um very dangerous because you know oh oh this is another meme we have on the channel is that um on on my on my channel when i'm doing speed running we have some rules okay rule number one is don't touch me all right and this is not directed, obviously, towards my chat, but this is more directed towards the enemies in the game that I'm playing. <laughs> Just don't touch me, okay? I take damage when you do that. I don't appreciate that, all right? So... <laughs> Just don't touch me. So the the what makes the flail so great is that you can assault all of these enemies, which can sometimes number eight, you know, when you when you split everything up. But you can do so from a distance. This is why the fire wand is so great in the first game. It's because you I can assault enemies from a distance. They don't have to get so close to me, and that way they don't touch me, which is great. So um, so yeah. But anyway, so for Newtopia two being able to use that specific weapon to uh, to you know, kill all the enemies from a distance is is very very satisfying so um so yeah i sincerely hope that there are folks that are going to be tuning in this year to the event to see that run that have also seen it, 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 even if not necessarily my run of newtopia at limit break from five years ago but um have seen the run of newtopia in some way shape or form because I think it'll be cool to to have that reference point of the differences between the games well, and, you know, in, just kind of some of the enhancements and the difference um, between the two. In the situation where somebody might not be familiar, might I suggest going to youtube.com slash RPG Limit Break and, uh, you know, going for a little yes. bit of a search and finding that old Newtopia run. I hear it's Indeed. quite an enjoyable watch. What a plug. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it really is. And, and um, while you're also there, we do also, every single one of these podcasts is archived under the uh, podcast section on YouTube. Uh, yep. One of my goals for the nearest future is to also get this on to Spotify and everything else. But for now, if you want to go back, we've had some great conversations in the past with tons of incredible speedrunners. Um, all of those are still there, and they're great watches. I'd recommend 
You got an hour at work where nothing else is going on, throw one on in the background, give it a listen. Uh, a little bit of a shameless plug, if you guys don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. So Not something at all. about that, so that, that like stab and move, is it like a swipe or is it like more of like a, like, you know, like, you know, Zelda, at least the past infamously, you know, when you swing your sword. Yeah. I, I love this as a kid, you know, you don't just like go ha, it's more of a wah. Or is no, it more it's, like it's, a, it's, it's, it's a ha. Direction? Okay. It's a ha. It's it's a it's a straight out stab. But you still get um, to like kind of move it around a little bit as you're doing things. It's, man, it's gonna be that's really exciting. It'll be interesting to see yes. how that actually plays in motion. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's um. Yeah. The combat in that game. It's it's super fun. Uh, and, how long is yeah. any percent? By the way, you said you know you said 100 percent about an hour and 20 minutes. Um, any percent. The world record for that I want to say is like an hour and two minutes, and the the 100 percent world record is an hour and. <sighs> Like seven or eight, I want to say. That's now crazy. There's not up. much. There's not much daylight between uh, the two categories. There isn't, and <clears> that's <throat> well. And and here's that's the thing that's unique about um, about Newtopia Two is that the the any percent category for that game is very oh here we go i've got it here um the i'm sorry let me finish that thought it's very dangerous i didn't even offer any percent when i did the submissions for this game is because it is not marathon safe you uh you are at a major disadvantage you have less health you have less weaponry um you have less uh, armor um, it's it, it's it's a rather rather challenging speed run. So anyway, just to uh, for for bookkeeping, world record for Newtopia to any percent one hour two minutes forty seven seconds. World record for hundred percent one hour nine minutes thirty two seconds. So a difference of only about seven minutes. Now, if we're talking about the time that you save from all the things that you skip, it's well over those seven minutes. But the reason why that gap is shorter is because you got to be a lot more careful in certain sections. There's combat for, you know, if you're going to skip this weapon, you're going to have to do combat without it. And that combat takes longer as if you would have otherwise had, you know, like the flail that I mentioned. So, so there is definitely the, the net time save is just that seven minutes, assuming all the combat and everything was the same. Um, then you're probably talking about a time save of probably in the, you know, 12, 10, 11, 12 minute range. So, um, so yeah, definitely a very different feel to the speed run for any percent when you're working with, when you're looking, working with limited resources. Right. Yeah. So what kind of tech are we using for, uh, your speed run? Are we uh, going out of bounds? Are we Wrong no, warping. you know, that, and that's the other thing too about both of the Newtopia games is that as it stands, the any percent runs for both of those games are completely glitchless, and the main reason for that is because we haven't discovered any useful glitches. You know, one time I did get my, I did clip into an NPC and I soft locked because I couldn't walk out of <laughs> essentially inside of her. That's the uh, worst. When you find a glitch in a, in a speed run you're doing, and the glitch is yeah. not only useless. But actively yeah. detrimental. <laughs> yeah, it was like it, it's like it's like um, it's like pulling your your pants out of the dryer and finding a fake twenty dollar bill in your pocket. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's kind of what it felt like. But yeah, so um, so yeah, so we have no glitches discovered. So I will be playing this. Uh, I will be playing this straight up, um, which is which is cool because you get to see. You'll get to see pretty much the entire game. Newtopia. That's another thing about um, about Newtopia Two is that um, it's the, the it, it, it's definitely more linear than the first one. Like I said, in the first one, you had the four different worlds that you the overworlds that you did. You had to do the overworlds in order, but the things that you did in the overworld, we often did them out of the quote intended order for obviously for for time saving purposes it's faster to go to the second dungeon than it is to the first one quote unquote um so so we do things like that whereas in in Newtopia 2 you, I mean, you're doing all of the dungeons in a specific order because it's like, hey, the the item to get into the next dungeon is found at the end of the current one, you know. So it's it, it, things just kind of chain along very naturally in that regard, which is fine. Um, but uh, it will it will definitely it, it definitely dictates exactly how we approach how we approach the run and and what 
you know, what equipment or what capabilities, just generally speaking, we will have when we get to certain sections of the game. So, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. So do, you, do you have the uh, Utopia 2 card as well, or do you play this? I know that these games oh. actually came out on Virtual Console, I believe. You know, okay, so <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so that's actually something that was unique about me speedrunning Newtopia 2 is that's that's the first game that I can think of or that I can remember that I learned to speedrun that I did not play as a child. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. All of the other all the other games that I ran were either on, you know, the NES or the Super Nintendo, which I obviously had grown up, and I still have that my, my original Super Nintendo is sitting about five feet to my left here. My childhood game consoles are right yep, over there. <laughs> yep. Yep. So um so, but yeah, but but just having played Newtopia, having already been into speedrunning Newtopia and being the Newtopia guy and whatnot, everyone was like, "How come you don't run the second game?" And I was like, "Well, I haven't picked it up yet." And I, I knew it was just, it was inevitable. It was only a matter of time before I learned it. So, um, so when I did, I was like, "Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got to." Uh, well, I mean, I use a flashcard for my. Um, for my runs of, of Newtopia and Utopia 2, for that matter, because the faster versions are the Japanese ones and because of the text scroll. So that that helps with that. But um, but as it um, and you know, if we're talking about a shameless plug here, the version of Newtopia 2 that I'll be running at Limit Break is going to be the North American version. And the reason for that is that uh, something else that's unique to Newtopia 2 when compared to its first one is you can name the main character, and that will be a bit more for for my run. Is there will be an incentive? It's up to uh, it's up to six letters or characters, if you will, and you can uh, you can name the main character who we refer to so the um the uh uh the protagonist of the first newtopia is, is a man in at least in the north american version his name is is jazeta japanese version is it's fure but it's jazeta in the first one and then in the second one you play as jazeta's son but because he's nameless because you name him he doesn't really have a name so we refer to him as jazzy j because he's <laughs> you know kind of a a, a, a junior of, of you know it, well it was it was jazeta junior was what we called him and then we shortened that to, to jazzy j so that's you, you'll when, when i'm doing the run you'll you'll probably hear me refer to him as jazzy j um but uh uh, even though um, he will be named by whoever it is that that decides to put the most money towards it, I'm very much looking forward to that because all of the money that is going to be donated towards whoever it is that wins that um, that bid war, 100% of those dollars donated are going to be uh, contributed to the National Alliance on Mental Illness. So I got a little curious about this, and you might you you are you might be approaching a record for another break. You might not know this. Well, Do you know what a copy of Utopia 2 in English goes for on eBay? Oh, jeez. It's got to be at least $250 or $300. Uh, the cheapest ones that I'm seeing on the front page are almost $600. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Hence why I've spent $80 for a flash meatball. card instead. <laughs> you might be running the most ex one of the most expensive games to ever be in Limit Break if you were to pick yeah. up a copy of it. Man. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't doubt it. I don't uh, doubt it at all. To be fair, I imagine probably you know TurboGrafx-16 wasn't super successful here, and it 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 you know it, I imagine the second copy of it probably did not get a very large print run. But no, yeah, no, that's 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 like I'm trying to think like what other RPGs I know that are on that like price range. Uh, I know like obviously Panzer Dragoon Saga is like the classic one, but that's it's funny someone mentioned that in chat right now. <laughs> yep, uh, yeah, PX and I are on the same level. Yep, uh, maybe maybe Secret of Evermore that I mentioned before because it was so obscure. I, Secret Evermore, I don't think is a super expensive. It might be a you know hundred or so dollars. Of, uh, oh, let's, let's, let's find that real quick. Secret <laughs> Evermore is you can get complete in box for one hundred and forty two. You can get a cart for forty two bucks. Ah, that's not bad at all. Uh, Lufia two, yeah, Lufia two, Lufia two did spike after a while, which is funny because uh, I. You know, yeah. more uh, RPG limit break deep lore. I hosted the 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 new top, the, yeah, not the Utopia, the Lufia two. Too many too many Ia two runs that have been in limit breaks in the past apparently. Yep. But I <laughs> I hosted Lufia two at the first limit break, and I immediately got home and bought a copy of that game because it looked so much like it was so much fun. Nice. That's the most beat up copy I've ever seen of any cartridge ever because you know it's Super Nintendo game. They, those things got beat to hell sometimes, and it was a rental copy from a Hollywood <laughs> video. <laughs> 
uh it, it was 60 bucks he's still got like the hollywood video thing etched onto the side of it you know and all kinds oh, of stuff, hollywood but, video nice wow. uh, yeah i know yeah I, okay i'm um, barely old enough for that one <laughs> Can I can I tell you all? Uh, I, I would, th- this actually reminds me of a story. I love telling this story any opportunity I can. All right, real quick, so, while you're telling that story, if anybody has any questions in chat, let's go ahead and get those in now. Uh, if anybody has any fun questions for Vani or about you know Newtopia yes. or Limit Break uh, or anything like that, we'll go ahead and throw those in the chat now. But uh, Vani, yes. let's, let's hear this uh, awesome story. Okay, so. Um, you know, I, I I made reference before about how as a kid I would I loved playing Final Fantasy, but the original Final Fantasy on the NES. So one of my favorite video games of all time is what got me into RPGs in the first place. You know, well over thirty years ago. So um, we played Final Fantasy II. I'll talk about my involvement, or the American Final Fantasy II, which is obviously Final Fantasy IV. I'll talk about what that means to me in a minute. But um, we, me and my, and my brother, who was about two years younger than me, um, he enjoyed playing the games with me as well. He really enjoyed what we understood to be Final Fantasy 2. And then we heard that Final Fantasy 3 was coming out, which is, of course, the, uh, the Final Fantasy 6. And so we went down to our local record store. It was called Music Plus. So it wasn't even like one of the, the super mainstream record stores back when you used to be able to buy or where where you would go to record stores to buy video games that was a fairly normal thing to do you know (laughs) and so we um but we knew it was going to be expensive and so sure enough we um we pull up a copy there and price tag on it 79.99 now at the time i would have been let's see here i would have been about (sighs) probably about 14 or so years old when the game came out my brother would have been 12 so you know i mean we are we are talking about lawn you know mowing the lawn money you know sweeping the leaves money not not a whole lot you know early 90s so uh, so we had decided we were going to go halves on it you know so we get up to the um we get up to the register and he scans the barcode for it now, whatever reason, that barcode was not connected to Final Fantasy III. It was connected to Super Star Wars, <laughs> which was priced at ten dollars. <laughs> nice. And so the guy says, "Okay, this you know with tax, it'll be this will be you know eleven, whatever." And my brother was like, oh, "Wait a minute!" I, I was like, mm, "Be quiet. <laughs> here's your tw- here's twenty dollars. Give me my change, and we'll and we'll go." And so, yeah, so we essentially got a brand new copy of Final Fantasy three um, for about an 87 percent discount. Oh, my God. That's oh, awesome. Which, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So the guy was not paying attention, didn't care. And I took full advantage. So. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. But then I, I wanted to talk real quick about, you know, Final Fantasy, quote unquote, two, um, which we all know is Final Fantasy four. And this is, um, that was, that was the game that got me into streaming and speed running in the first place. It was, um, I had discovered Limit Break probably about like 2015, just, just going through YouTube videos and whatnot i was like oh this is super cool and um because i had gotten i learned about gdq and speed running and whatnot but then to me the concept of back then the concept of speed running rpgs was something that didn't even occur to me because i was like oh rpgs are meant to take a long time you know that's just kind of not what they're for and then i saw a video of brosentia doing final fantasy 4 what was back then called die hard percent which we now know is the no credits warp category because you use you know the you do the 64 um door or the stair glitch in order to skip like you know the last 40 percent of the game and he did it in you know with the incentives it was about two and a half hours and i was like word it can you can actually finish a speed like a full-on jrpg in two and a half hours i was like let me look into this. So I decided to start learning Die Hard Percent. And then in the beginning of 2017, the community held, the, the Final Fantasy IV speedrun community held an event called My City of Mayhem, which is, it was a huge tournament where we were racing um, a 
category of the game called Paladin Percent, which for those that aren't familiar, um, you know, you're the, uh, the main character uh, who was a Dark Knight, uh, goes on a quest, has an epiphany, learn some stuff about himself and he becomes a paladin and in the speed run it takes roughly one hour to get there and so that was a nice little palatable portion of the speed run for people that wanted to get into either speed running the game or speed running rpgs themselves and whatnot and i was like wait a minute i already have been learning this no credits warp category i kind of know this why not join a tournament? I don't know. It sounds fun. What do I have to lose? Well, what I didn't realize at the time was not what I had to lose, but it was that I had everything to gain. And what I gained was all of you wonderful folks here in the Limit Break community. Um, because it was so, and, and some people who are, who are seriously some of my best friends, um, I'll just give shout outs to some folks here. Couch 23, Rivers McCown, Storm Crazy Iowan, Velociraptor 42, Dravenheart, Sawny Wrath 11, Penguinator, Eldonia, um, Natara, Nitsky 1, who else? Um, I feel like I'm missing some, some people there that are like, like ones that became just dear dear friends of mine in the in the community hold on um i feel like i'm missing someone maybe i'm not anyway but, but i mean <laughs> yeah. the list the list goes on and on um i mean as far as the people that are in the final fantasy 4 speedrunning community and then um you know when when it came to the, the whole speedrunning part that limit break was that year and you know these people that had become i was just like oh they're just super awesome i was like i want to hang out with these folks there's this event where it's going on i'm gonna do it so i attended limit break in 2017 i was only there for a few days uh, and but the rest is history like i said i've attended everyone ever since i've hosted and everyone after that i've done this like i said fourth one in a row i'll be doing runs um i'm a staff member we'll talk about that i'm sure uh this will be my second year as a staff member for the organization so um all of that is you know it was it was the gateway into me becoming involved with with all of you and i will be eternally grateful for that because so many of the people that I've met here, so many people that I've become associated with through speed running, steaming, streaming, all that good stuff um, means the world to me. And to um, to know that it all sprung from that one video game that I loved as a kid and now has just such a deeper meaning to me. In fact, I brought my, um, we were talking about the testimonials at the end of the event. I actually brought my original copy of, of Final Fantasy IV to that testimonial and i showed it on camera because i was like this right here is the reason why i'm here um and so it, it was it was really cool to get up in front of all those folks and kind of talk about my you know what it means to me and and just how um how significant it was to be able to to be a part of a group like this so yeah very cool yeah. yeah. No, Limit Break is it's definitely incredible. And uh yeah, no, the community aspect of it's great. I'm getting married to somebody from the community even. So uh Yeah, shout out. That's amazing. <laughs> Heck yeah, cool. Yeah. Right <laughs> lots lots of uh, you know it's a great community. Definitely recommend if you haven't, you know, been to an event or whatever, uh I know people that don't speedrun that go to them and have a great time, like I said. Uh, yeah. Hopefully we'll get to showcase, you know, fingers crossed, I do have plans to try to showcase a little bit of what goes on behind the scenes at uh these events because it is like i said what you see on the stream is a very very small percentage of what actually happens like i said we have a karaoke yeah on a break where a bunch of people will go out for karaoke. oh yeah there's the board game room um, where people will be doing you'll see like there will be a bunch of puzzles but also people playing everything from mahjong to uh, yeah. trading card games you'll see people playing you know four player mario party but one of my favorite uh speeding event things yeah. i've ever seen was actually we played mario party 3 2v2v2v2v2 two 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 two, where everybody held one half of the control so, <laughs> yeah <laughs> so nice. uh, yeah you, we were playing it and you like one person held the left like the middle prong of the n64 controller and the other person held the right prong of the n64 controller and you were playing uh two players one controller eight players all playing the same game of mario party that oh, sounds awesome <laughs> that sounds uh, awesome yeah so, so uh, what not not to be pedantic but just one thing that you mentioned before about you know all the things that uh happen at limit break and you mentioned karaoke night it's actually karaoke nights Ooh, that's right yeah, that's, yeah. we had two Multiple. last year we're gonna have two again this year so oh, I, gotta, I gotta figure out how ready to the body do, uh, it will happen i gotta outdo myself <laughs> this year for uh you know what did i do last year I did frank sinatra and i did uh if i had a million dollars 
uh, oh, you and Raptor, that was with, funny. Uh, yeah. Phil, if I remember correctly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, no, it, it it really is a super fun time. Uh, other stuff yeah. we've done, we've had a bowling night, which is great because yeah, I, I say the, the the two of the greatest group activities you can do are karaoke and bowling. Oh, and the yeah. reason why is love it. Somebody will be terrible at both of them, but no one will have will the time care of their lives. Terrible. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. You kind of laugh with them, not at them, and then yeah. there will be people that are incredible <laughs> at them. You'll have somebody in the group that just knows how to bowl or knows how to sing, and they'll do that, and you go, holy crap! Fadi yeah. knows how to sing? Yeah. Hobbs knows how to bowl? Where did this yeah. come from, you know? Yeah. And, and, but like I said, but if you're bad, nobody cares. Like, you don't have to sing in your everyday no. life. You don't no. have to know how to roll a ball, you know, 20 feet down the lane without it going out of the gutter. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, other stuff we've had at escape room nights where a big group of people goes and does an escape room together. Yep. Uh, we've only failed one time. I was not very happy with that escape room. It was not very. Oh well no. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like you know, just, again, there's just so much, so many cool yeah. things that happen in the background of Limit Break. And you know, uh, another thing that is that I always look forward to at Limit Break, um, especially doing it with a group of people, is going out to find all the really cool and unique places to eat. Mm -hmm. There's lots of different, you know, for those that aren't aware, new, um, I'm sorry, um, RPG Limit Break is held every year in Salt Lake City, Utah. And there's, uh, especially in the downtown SLC area, there are actually a lot of cool restaurants. There are a lot of, a lot of good places to eat. One that's a tradition for us um, that we discovered many years ago uh, is a place called Pretty Bird, which is a, uh, it is, they, it's, it's air fried fried chicken yep. and it's spicy and it's juicy and it's th got that nice crust on it it's just fantastic fried chicken so um and i'm a big fried chicken fan so anytime we go i mean and there's a group of about five to six of us that uh, like we're the core group we're like we know oh pretty birds happening and then well, like we had one year where it was i don't know maybe about 25 of us that descend on this place it's a shack it's got it's got seating for like i don't know 15 16 people yeah px was there with us um <laughs> and so all of a sudden 25 of us roll up and the i remember the the dude kind of looking at us wide-eyed like where the hell did all of you come from <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah it was uh but it, it was worth every second um because um uh, and that's some good chicken so yeah well, I, I'm looking so, forward to uh, seeing you in uh, yeah, six weeks. Jeez, Louise. So much speaking speaking of, of seeing y'all in six weeks, for those of you that are out there, especially if you're watching it live, registration is still open. So if you are on the fence about attending, maybe this is something that, you know, after hearing all the cool stuff that we're talking about, you think, you know what? I actually want to be a part of that. You still can. Um, there is still oh i see uh I, I see there's some behind the scenes working here looking at some yep, dates there it is now, <laughs> um looks like registration ends on the 21st so that's two weeks from today um still got plenty of time to get in there we would love to to see you we've we've already got all our volunteers and whatnot or at least we're in the process of of, of sorting those out but um but yeah if you want to just come and just hang out that is perfectly fine just to to be there to be immersed in everything that we're doing not just you know the the camaraderie and the and the sense of community and all the events but then also the fact that i mean the reason why we're coming together is to raise money for for nami for the national alliance on mental illness to just kind of be part of and, and around everything that goes along with that is really special too so um so don't feel like you need to come and like do stuff like runs or volunteering or or anything like that if you want to just come just to immerse yourself in the vibe that is 100 percent cool definitely yeah. do that i, I encourage you to do so and this is my second run Oh, go sorry. ahead. Go ahead, Will. Sorry. I think, I, I also, as the former prize coordinator, uh, please do submit for the prize submission. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show this off. I'm actually going to probably submit these. We do have Final Fantasy V in the marathon this year. And much like last year, actually, you have some graded cards for Final Fantasy V, which would be kind of uh, fun. Show these off real quick. So I have a Lena and a Ferris uh, graded uh, cards. Uh, I can get them to show through the camera. Oh, the glare. Yeah. The glare is not wanting to cooperate. Ah. Ooh, the one in your right hand looks so. Oh, they're, yeah, they're, they're both really, really, really good. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna probably put both of these up as a uh, duo for that Final Fantasy V run this year. Mm. But uh, definitely, like, get those prizes in. Those really do help. I know I'd be like, 
you know, they really do drive donations as in like a different way than just donating money. Uh, yeah, and, and like, it's awesome. We have some really cool stuff. There's some really cool stuff. I don't want to spoil anything. Or, you know, I know some cool uh, things can be happening. And yeah, we're coming up on a million total dollars raised for NAMI over the course of every event, which is such a cool milestone to be hitting too. <laughs> Absolutely yeah, incredible. That's awesome. Yeah, just uh, incredible. A million dollars takes a lot to get to. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So well, speaking of what it takes to get there, um, because obviously, I mean, we've been doing this event for many years, but. But the event can't be done without the volunteers, all the people that contribute their time of their own will to make Limit Break happen. And we are obviously very, very, very grateful for all of our volunteers. And part of what my involvement with Limit Break has been, especially recently, is as a what's called a role coordinator, where we have all different kinds of categories of, of volunteers. And the one that I'm in charge of is the hosts, the ones that are get on the mic and read off your donation comments and what we call blurbs, where we're giving information about maybe the charity itself, the event, um, other things that are that are going on in and around Limit Break. And so I need to filter through them and, you know, get them on a schedule. As I'm sure many of you know, RPG Limit Break itself, it, it's a 24-hour event. It's round the clock. So we've got to schedule people, you know, to be on shift from like 1.30 a.m. to 5 a.m., whatnot. So it, it, it gets interesting. Um, but it, it's it, it's been really fun. It's kind of like, it's almost like a puzzle to put together. If, you, if you've never put together a schedule for anything for an event, it, it's, it's like a, a puzzle where you need to figure out what pieces fit where, and you kind of have to get a little creative. And sometimes you kind of have to bend the rules a little bit, but, um, mm -hmm. but, but you get it done. And so that's actually something that I was working with, um, with, uh, Bob the Ninja Goldfish, who is no stranger to anybody watching here. Uh, shout outs to Bob. Uh, he and, and uh, it was me and him and, uh, and Ghost Kumo. We put together the schedule just the other day. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a lot of work, uh, but it was fun. And it's really rewarding because once we schedule these people on there, now I get to you know, communicate with them, give them orientations on how to do their, uh, on, on how to do their role for what we're doing. But then I also get to kind of, of, of give people guidance because I mean, I was chosen to be the host coordinator for a reason. Um, I've done it a lot, I'm not too bad at it. And so I feel like I have a lot of, a lot of wisdom, um, and knowledge that I can impart on people and being able to do that, to teach others to, um, and you know, and this goes back to speed running people that wanted to ask me about, you know, whether it be Newtopia or anything else, any game that I was running, um, if they have questions about tech or how this works or RNG or whatnot, and for me to be able to educate them and, and impart my wisdom on them is something that I really, really appreciate being able to do. That's something that I really enjoy doing. And so for hosting here for limit break, that's definitely something that I'll be doing. Um, because, you know, we, we, the, the, one of the really cool things about the hosts and coordinating this for the hosts for the event is that all the different individuals that are going to be hosting for this event, they all bring something different as far as their, the sound of their voice, their personality, their energy, their, their pacing, kind of their feel for, for what it is that they're doing. You're going to hear a lot of different unique approaches to hosting over the course of the week. And I think that's one of the things that makes that specific role very special is that um, people get to put their own personal touch. You really get to hear, and this is something we wanted to do with auditions. We wanted to hear their personality. We wanted to hear what they were like, just naturally talking about these donations and this event and whatnot and how they can put their own touch on it. So that's something that's gonna be super cool. And that's something that we we took into consideration is, you know, if you know, we have two people that maybe have some contrasting styles, do we wanna put them back to back on the event? Or, or, or the way that this person does it kind of pairs really well with this other person to have, so to have a segue from one to the other makes a lot of sense. So it wasn't just, hey, are you available here? Boom, we're gonna plug you in. Yes, that obviously was a big factor and arguably the main factor 
factor for scheduling, but there's so much more nuance that goes into it, which I, is one of the really cool parts of doing what I do for Limit Break is figuring out all of that and and putting that together. So, um, so Ghoul, like you said, you were uh, you were the the prize coordinator. Everybody that donates the the prizes, you know, I'll, I'll help you out with the plug here means so much because yeah it can really elicit a lot of donations like hey yeah i'll toss in five or ten dollars if i could win this this perler or this this trading card or this copy of this game or i don't know like a steam deck or a modded 3ds like we had last year yeah. lots of stuff um you know i mean you know blankets you know vinyl records i mean the list goes on and on there's all kinds of different things that people donate it's super cool to see how creative our community is because a lot of the things that get donated are made by hand mm -hmm. obviously yeah i mean if you're donating like a video game or like i said a steam deck and whatnot that's something you buy from a store and you put in but i mean people have made like blankets people have made paintings they've made all so, kinds some of, the, of like, different art, stuff original artwork that's hand. been donated the in the past has been so cool it's just I, it's like, mind-blowing yeah, yeah uh, my personal yeah. favorite of all time was still there was a little mini sculpture of like the kingdom hearts door to darkness or whatever where it's like you, you could literally see like the little mini goofy you know and like mickey and all that like, this is freaking yeah. cool it's yeah it's it's truly incredible so so what our community is able to do as far as their contributions and their um you know the mark that they make on on what we do at limit break is it's just it's fantastic and it's just it's cool that everybody has their own unique talents and their own resources that you know when we all come together as a community and, and all the parts of a whole that make limit break what it is um, there's just so many different things that go into it and, and the prize contributors are absolutely a part of that. So we, we appreciate and love all of you very much. I think that is probably about a pretty decent spot to start kind of wrapping things up. So sure. uh, as always, I have a little couple housekeeping things to keep track of. Again, we, we pointed out you know, the prize submissions deadline. Those are open and active still now. <clears throat> Registration is still ongoing for the event itself. I believe next weekend we have the Dragon Quest Marathon should be on the channel. Uh, let me double check and see, but uh, yep, that is April 10th through the 14th. Definitely give that a, a good watch. I believe the weekend after that, we should have another episode of the Average of the Breaks podcast. I will not be there for that because I will be in Kansas City playing trading card games, but I'll be uh, hopefully organizing something. We'll have uh, someone on the channel, another awesome guest with some great uh, stories to tell of their own. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to top Vani, but I'm sure they'll do their best. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, thanks again, Bonnie, for being on. Uh, Steam, yeah. or Steam, thank well, you. I know this is your first time hosting. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. You did a great job. Uh, also, huge, huge, <laughs> always massive thank you to Ashen, who does all the work behind the scenes, makes this so much easier than it would be otherwise for us. Yeah. Ashen. Hold on. Well, and, and yeah, and, and all of the things that you said are true, very much so, with one exception. Uh, I have appeared on here, but there's still one order of business that we need to attend to, okay? Oh. Because it's not just me that's going to be appearing here. Now, anybody that is a fan of my, of my streams knows there is a regular segment that we have on there, and we simply refer to it as Puppy Cam, wherein I have my dog come and spend a few minutes with me um, and we just kind of talk about her and just how gorgeous she is. And um, I feel like if this is something that, you know, we're going to have me on here on camera and we're talking about it, um, I kind of need to bring her on, don't I? Probably. Yeah. So, well, I'm gonna, yeah. so I'm going to step away for a minute. I'm going to retrieve. I'm going to retrieve the star of the show. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you can uh, if you want to plug something else or whatnot, uh, we will do that. But I will be right back. All right. <laughs> Uh, while he's doing that, I just want to say thank you for having me on and, you know, give me this chance to to, to hang out with you guys. No, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Like I said, these are always a lot of fun. They're kind of the, the highlights of, you know, my every other week should be. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, the next one for sure. And uh, looking forward to uh, working with you a lot more, Steam. Appreciate uh, it. By the way, uh, how, I'm assuming you finished Rebirth by now, right? I sure did. Four times. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how you guys do it. I'm 40 hours in. I still feel like I'm like barely in the game. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, it's, yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad I got, if you played it four times, I'm assuming it's at least okay. So uh, I'm looking oh, forward yeah. to experiencing that for myself. But yeah, tra training myself on speed running it right now. So that's, uh, that's the challenging part because 
it being like a, a open world game sort of makes it uh there's a lot of options that you could do so we're just all trying to hash out the options and the party combinations and whatnot i'll say all the character so, options are uh very interesting as well so many things you oh, can yeah. do and i think vani is almost back with us vani is looks puppyless though <laughs> We will fix that. Here we go. Uh, yeah. oh. Come on. Come on, baby. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at the Goldie. Yes. Yes. So here she is. <laughs> the star of the show. This is this is one of my dogs. I have three, but this is this is the one in particular we'll be talking about. Her name is Catalina. We call her Lena for short. Um, she is about four years old. She is a Golden Retriever and Collie mix. Oh, okay. And I was say that the, the little bit of the white chest kind of gives away the Collie a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but she's very energetic, very athletic. And as you can tell, she's a very, very good girl. <laughs> and and she's beautiful. Um, yeah. She is... The camera doesn't do her justice. <laughs> she's got all of these... these um, I refer to them as her... In fact, you can kind of see here in her, in her legs. Are, oh, whoops. Come on. Oh, here. Are you going to do your thing? She does. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. This is now this is a phenomenon that normally happens during streams. We refer to this as lick with hooch, where basically <laughs> she just kind of like it's it's like her bones just stop being bones and she kind of just melts into my lap with the exception of this leg. Well, this leg sticks like out real far. Looks like she's synchronized swimming. I was yeah, saying, yeah, actually, exactly. here's, no, 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 actually, no. Here's what she's doing. She's dabbing. She's she's doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but no, is. this is. But no, but but as you can see, I put it against the lamp here, and we refer to this as the radiant paw of holy light. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, she's got these feathers on her legs. It's like this this plumage that comes down. That's very very fancy. See, here's the thing. She thinks she is ferocious. She thinks she is a very, very intimidating dog. Look at this face. Look at this face. Who is intimidated by this? Anyone? No. She looks sleepy. No. Huh? <laughs> she, you know, she, yeah. She's very, well, actually, no. My, my wife's down there uh, uh, cutting up some food, and so that had her attention. So when I wanted no. to come up, she was like, oh, man, I was having fun. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. So, oh, and we've gone liquid again <laughs> with the leg sticking out. So, but yeah. So, yeah. So, this is my dog. Uh, she is a big part of what I do on stream and I figured I would share. So, but, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this part up here. So bye-bye. Hey. <laughs> bye Lena. All right. Yes. Have a good one, everybody. And we'll see y'all in the next one. <laughs> Thanks All for right. watching. Thanks everyone.